there's an expression I use which is uh, chance favours the prepared mind. Now, I don't get up in the morning and say I'm going to invent something. It doesn't work like that. What actually happened to me, fortunately, is that I was sitting there watching television one day and I could have been watching Come Dancing or The Golden Shot or something, but I was watching a program about the spread of HIV AIDS in Africa. Now this was awful because you could see these bodies being thrown down open graves and you think, God. Anyway, they said the only way they could possibly control it or stop it was through education and through the information which could be best brought to them using a radio. But it was a problem. Most of Africa, in that particular case, didn't have electricity and the only other form of electricity was in the form of batteries, which were horrendously expensive. Where do you get batteries up the Wadi Thartha, you know? And I'm thinking, hmm. Then I'm thinking to myself, hang on, hang on. Do you know, if you can get all that noise on a gramophone by dragging a rusty nail around a piece of old Bakelite using a spring, surely there's enough power in that spring to drive a dynamo, which in turn would drive a radio. Boom, boom. And what I did was get a chunk of um, uh, a wood and literally wind it up a tree next door in the garden. And as it slowly descended, it drove that little dynamo. And so I literally had a radio that could run all that time. And somebody said, well, how long does it run, Trev? I said, how tall is the tree? Now that same thing, believe it or not, could be used. The same crude device could still be used to run your laptop. So I think with the help of the, the Google team, we could have a gizmo or gadget there which would enable people in the third world to utilise, even though it's the only computer that this little you know, team have. They've got everlasting electricity because that weight machine could be used during the night or during the day and it doesn't cost a fortune to make. With the new technology, you have a source which you can constantly use. You look up something, you can get 10,000 of these, 50,000 of this. These are answers to a question. Where do I obtain this? Where do I obtain that? So this is where it comes into it. When I was a boy, the only thing we had was the library. And chances are, if you went to the library and you wanted to learn something, chances are the book wasn't there. It'll be back in four, four days' time, Mr. Bayless. Oh, thank you. So now, of course, it's so much better. I think you've got to realise that that primitive, if you like, technology that I started in 1991 or whatever it is, is so simple. But now that's come on and the, this type of mechanical uh, technology and piezoelectric technology could now be used to power up your laptops and also enable you to recharge your mobile phones and these new electro devices. Now, obviously, I'm interested in the third world where people can't afford to buy a cell phone for 200 quid. So I want people to be able to go down to basics or to get a computer, for example, which is of low cost, which could be used by a community and we could then provide them with, say, a solar panel to recharge it, or we could have a wind-up technology of some kind, whether it be the weight up a tree or a spring-powered device, to enable you to use the new technology. We think, you know, we're right there now, but in a hundred years' time, you imagine. Probably fine when you're born, you have to have this gizmo or gadget stuck in your ear, you know, and then all you have to do is look at the sun and you're listening to whatever you want, you know. The new technology is going oh, in the most extraordinary way.